this season has been a fantastic time to get into one of the most overlooked volleyball leagues in the entire world. Time difference, isolated location, and a language barrier have traditionally made the Russian league one of the most difficult leagues to follow, but this year it's been the easiest it's ever been. The league is 8 teams deep this year, Zenikazan Dynasty is fading, leaving the league more open, and matches have been streaming on the TV Start YouTube channel. If you guys want a refresher on what went down in Russia this year, stick around. In this video, I'll make my picks for the best player at each position, my Rookie of the Year, Most Improved, and at the end, my MVP of the Russian League this season. Remember to like the video and subscribe for more volleyball content. Italian bruiser Ivan Zaitsev returns to his father's homeland from Italy and did not skip a beat adjusting to the physicality of the league. He took on a huge offensive role for the team, with the other outside hitters playing more of a supporting role. Third place in the league in scoring with 4.53 points per set on a 52 attack percentage was enough offense to let Kemerovo's defense place them as the second seed in Russia. Lots of good opposites in Russia like Sveden Sokolov, Maxi Mikhailov, Drazen Lubrich, Viktor Politaev, and Dmitry Vietsky, but no elite team relies on their opposite more than Kemerovo on Zaitsev. And one of the biggest surprises in men's volleyball this year, Dynamo Moscow dethroned Russian royalty Zenit Kazan and stormed out of the gate to a 24 and two record. While they were expected to be good, one of the reasons why they were simply not good, but completely dominant was Russian setter Pavel Pankov. His hitters Daru, Sokolov, Podlishnek, and Vlasov all ranked among the league's most efficient hitters. Pankov achieved this through a late release, high contact setting style that threw blockers completely off while still retaining pinpoint precision. Russia will have some tough decisions to make this summer regarding their setter, as for me, right now, Pankov is clearly the best. Another key to Moscow's success was the grit and grind play of Belgian outside hitter Sam Duru. While lots of outside hitters are adding tips and wipes to their attacking repertoire, Duru has a simple toolbox, just the hammer. His long arms and powerful swing combined with a keen eye for the block led to him hitting a blistering 54%, highest in the league for outside hitters. Add to that a consistently strong jump serve, above average reception, and one of the best blocks in position 4, and you have one of the best wings in Russia. A familiar face to many of you watching this channel, the always on 4 Red Bulls Dmitry Volkov has been a mainstay of the VML dominating Russian teams for the past few seasons. This year was a big test for Dmitry, with longtime teammate Igor Kliuka heading to Zenit St. Petersburg and Christian Pater deciding he likes Bim Bim Bop more than Blini. But he managed to become the best version of himself we have seen yet, balancing his penchant for exuberance with leadership and becoming the highest scoring outside hitter in the entire league at 4.36 points per set on 50% attacking. Also, his serve is becoming a real weapon and once again, in the Kaliuka vs Volkov debate, we may have shifted back into Volkov's favor. Oh no. Oh no. Your favorite middle's favorite middle, Ivan Yakovlev needs to be in the conversation as one of the game's most elite middle blockers. He crushes every aspect of being a middle, leading the league in blocks, averaging 1.9 kills per set on 62% attacking, and has a devastating two-hand toss spinner. Ivan is a springy, mobile middle whose decision making is rapidly improving to match his physical gifts. He is one of those middles that just makes the position look easy. Another unexpected star of Russia this year was Pidar Krizmanovic. Not that he was playing badly, but after a decent but not great season in Italy and being in the shadow of Trentino Serbian middle blockers, I didn't have crazy expectations for him this season. But he turned out to be a key factor for the second place Kemerovo in every facet averaging 2.49 points per set on a ridiculous 66% attacking. He did so mostly through 31 sets from Kobzar, but he was able to keep it unpredictable with a variety of wide angles, and it's just crazy to me that he's not even a starter for the Serbian national team when he's playing this well. Ever since the Russian libero Alexei Verbov retired and ruined Zenit Kazan forever, there's been a bit of a question mark about who is going to fill the hole in Russia at that position. This year, the libero that did the best imitation was the Zenit Kazan libero Valentin Golubev. 
We managed to receive at a league leading 32% efficiency while also taking most of the court for Bartosz Bednors. He's not as flashy as some of the other top liberos in the world, but hustles incredibly hard, and it's quite a feat for a hitter to put a ball down in his vicinity. As I mentioned earlier, one of the most potent front lines in Russia was that of Kuzbaz Kamarovo, whose team basically functioned like one of those crazy Japanese blocking machines. While the whole team are physical, disciplined blockers, the underrated centerpiece to their scheme was 35-year-old middle blocker Mikhail Sherbakov. The defensive specialist averaged almost a block per set and set the tone for the second best team in Russia, definitely a deserving front court defensive player of the year. The king of volleyball YouTube, Eric Shoji, was very close to being my best libero, but he still made my list as the best back row defender in Russia. 2.1 digs per set doesn't represent his full effect on Fekel Novi Erngoy's defense. His hustle and energy sets the tone for the rest of the team, and his attitude elevates everyone around him. All liberos should take note of Shoji's footwork, and the way he switches from cover to his defensive spot quickly and effortlessly. It's been kind of tough to give out the most improved player award given the half season that took place in 2019-2020, but I don't think many players have involved their standing in the volleyball world more this year than Pavel Pankov. He's always had top tier physicality and decision making at the setter position, but this was the year that I finally felt like he had the placement and precision to make use of those abilities to the fullest extent. Instead of riding the bench for a team in the Russian League, 6'11 opposite Kirill Kletz decided to gain some valuable experience and starting minutes in Bulgaria and Germany the last couple years, where he ranked as one of the leading scorers in both leagues. It has paid off for him this year as he returned to Russia in his age 22 season as a well-developed scorer averaging 4.71 points per set and 0.32 blocks per set in a starting role for the 10th place Yanesi. He is a dominant presence at the net even by Russian standards, and I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a serious look from playoff teams for next season. Just when the hype from his U21-2015 World Championships was starting to fade, Russian setter Pavel Pankov came out and posted one of the best Russian setter seasons we have seen since Prime Grankin. Leading Moscow to a number one seed, winner and MVP of the CV Cup, and he's still only 25. He comes from a volleyball family, and you can tell, with tactical decision making and fantastic ball trajectory. If I were coach Samuel Vuo, Pankov would be my number one choice for the Olympics, without a doubt. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm gonna put the team to the side so you guys can get a refresher of the top players in Russia this year. As always, let me know in the comments if you have a disagreement, you think another player should have gotten one of the awards. Love to get the interaction and talk to you guys in the comments. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you want more pro volleyball content. And I'll see you next time.